Hi, Teresa Lyons here, creator of Navigating Autism and Eat to Heal Autism. And in today's Ask Dr. Lyons question, I will answer, what is Clostridium difficile? Or otherwise known as C. diff. Let's get to PowerPoint. Okay, let's get this Ask Dr. Lyons lesson right underway. C. diff, infection, also abbreviated CDI, is triggered by toxins produced by the bacteria. When normal bacteria flora is disrupted, the colon is colonized with the C. diff bacteria, and toxins are released that cause mucosal damage and inflammation. There are more than 300 toxigenic strains of C. diff that have been discovered in North America. A little more about C. C. diff infection was first described as a side effect of antibiotics in 1978, so it's been a while. In recent years, C. diff infections have shown marked increases in frequency, severity, and resistance to standard treatment. Mortality rate from C. diff infections is about 7%. So this really is a, a serious infection. Roughly 14,000 Americans die per year from C. diff infections. Diagnosis of C. diff infection, CDI, requires the presence of diarrhea, so diarrhea meaning at least three unformed stools in 24 hours, or radiographic evidence in addition to positive stool testing for the C. diff toxin. So there certainly is a thorough analysis to diagnosing someone with a C. diff infection. CDI symptoms are diarrhea, fever, elevated white blood cell count, tachycardia, which just means fast heartbeat, abdominal pain, and or distension. Patients may progress to renal failure, shock, intensive care unit admission, and possibly death. What are C. diff treatments? You stop taking the offending antibiotic. Metroninazole is the drug of choice for mild infection, while vancomycin should be used for more severe cases. Extreme cases require different care. So basically what happens when you have a C. diff infection, you are more than likely taking some type of antibiotic that killed both whatever pathogenic microorganism that was the target, but it also killed beneficial microorganisms. And then C. diff was able to overpopulate in your large intestine, producing toxins, which cause inflammation, increased uh, mucus, and your body is responding with diarrhea. So that is why you stop taking the offended antibiotic. And then you start treating for the C. diff infection. Recurrence rates of C. diff treatment is about 30% for both of those regimens. And a review of 63 randomized controlled trials found that most individual studies did not show a statistically significant difference. The combination of studies, which included nearly 12,000 patients, found a significantly lower rate of antibiotic-associated diarrhea in patients who received probiotics during their course of antibiotics. So again, that makes sense. If you're taking an antibiotic that is going to kill both pathogenic and beneficial microorganisms, you would want to take a probiotic which has beneficial microorganisms, and that would definitely help, according to the 63 randomized controlled trials, it would help decrease your chance of getting a C. diff infection. So I talked about drug options for treatment. There is another treatment called fecal microbiota transplantation. And I know fecal microbiota transplantation has been a hot topic recently, but it's really not all that new. In 1958, a scientific article was published that described the use of fecal enemas in the treatment of four patients with CDI. Research in 2016 found that the fecal microbiota at initial diagnosis in patients with recurrence trended towards lower diversity of their microbiota when compared with patients who did not reoccur. So again, basically it's saying that the more diverse and robust your microbiota is, the easier it is to overcome an infection. And that makes sense. Two consecutive fecal microbiota transplantations have been found to have a near 100% cure rate of CDI. And that research comes out of Australia. Fecal microbiota transplantation by colonoscopy was both cost-saving and more effective than three types of drugs and two other delivery methods of fecal microbiota transplantation. 
And if you're interested in learning more about the specifics of fecal microbiota transplantation, especially related to autism, please sign up for my newsletter, C. diff and autism. Again, autism is probably why you're listening to this video. So, in 2000, a small proof-of-principle intervention trial was done where vancomycin was orally administered to severely autistic children with chronic persistent diarrhea. And I'm sure many of you have heard of this study or something like it, or you've heard about the whole concept of, oh, if I give an antibiotic to my child with autism, they might get better. This is where that idea comes from. So it's from the year 2000, where a small proof of principle trial was done with vancomycin. There were only 10 children that this was performed on. Again, it's a small proof of principle intervention trial. And there was short-term improvement of symptoms seen in 8 out of the 10 children. These improvements did not last, especially once vancomycin was stopped. All behavioral gains in these children were lost, suggesting temporary microbiota change influenced these children's behavior. And prolonged use of vancomycin is not encouraged. I don't think any of the scientists involved in this research ever had the inclination of giving long-term vancomycin as a solution. But it's really important to do proof of principle studies like this because changing the microbiota can actually change the behavior and hence quality of life for our children. All right, a little bit more about C. diff and autism. Research in 2002 found that certain clostridial species were seen in autistic fecal samples and not seen in fecal samples from healthy subjects. So again, this is the beginning of trying to understand from the perspective of the microbiota, what is different in someone who has autism versus someone who doesn't. Research in 2005 analyzing the gut microbiota of children with autism, their unaffected siblings, and unrelated controls found that there is a greater quantity of clostridia in the autistic group. And here's a direct quote from that research paper. Strategies to reduce clostridial population levels harbored by ASD patients or to improve their gut microflora profile through dietary modulation may help to relieve gut disorders common in such patients. So if your child has autism and you're thinking about or giving probiotics, please also make sure that they are following an optimal special diet for them. It's extremely important. And here are some references. So now you know all about C. diff and autism.